Good evening. Welcome to Epiphany Lutheran Church in Richmond, Virginia. I'm Kevin Barger, the Director of Music Ministry. This is our Music Minute, taking a look at the hymns we'll be using in worship tomorrow, the 10th Sunday after Pentecost. We're going to start with our hymn of the day, God the Sculptor of the Mountains. This is in the section of our hymnal that's relating to the hymns of creation. It's a newer hymn for us, although we have done it a couple of times. Um, it was commissioned in 1993 by the Alumni Council of Perkins School of Theology in Dallas, Texas. It was to honor their outgoing dean at the time, and the author of this text wrote it while visiting Alaska, and he was so impressed by the vastness of the mountains uh, and everything, the, the size of Alaska, that he um, tried to capture all of this in this particular hymn text. God the Sculptor of the Mountain. Hopefully you'll remember that from uh, our previous times. Next, we're going to move to our sending hymn, Praise and Thanksgiving. And this was written to fill a need for Harvest Thanksgiving hymns. There was a, really a felt like there was a need for that. And it reminds us that we can thank God rightly only if we are ready to do God's will by sharing those gifts with others so that they may rejoice with us. Uh, it was first published in a collection of uh, hymns that were printed privately. Um, so it actually wasn't intended to, to be a hymn necessarily. And it's set to a very popular tune that I'm sure you'll recognize, uh, and that would be Morning Has Broken by Cat Stevens. This is Praise and Thanksgiving. We're going to move on over to the piano for this and the rest of our hymns today.
That's definitely a favorite for many. Beautiful tune. All right, we will we'll move on to our communion hymn, Just As I Am Without One Plea. This is another tune by Bradbury. You remember we just last week did Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us by William Bradbury as well. This hymn was written in 1834. It was considered an invalid hymn at the time, uh, or an invalid hymn for the period. Charlotte Elliott was quite ill when she wrote this, and she wrote it to assist her brother in building a school at St. Mary's Hall. It was for a benefit for that. Uh, she felt useless because she was ill and couldn't do anything, so she stayed up all night as she penned this hymn as a result. And if you look at some of the words, you can um, get some new meaning from that as you look at the words that she was feeling in that helpless state. Just as I am without one plea. For our final hymn tomorrow, that will be Gathering Hymn, All Who Hunger Gather Gladly. Sylvia Dunstan wrote this hymn, and she went to the meeting of the Hymn Society in 1990, so much more recent than the last one we did, to learn a bit more about tunes associated with Southern Harmony. And this tune, Holy Manna, is a Southern Harmony hymn. And following the conference, she vacationed with several of the concert conference goers, and they were at the beach. <clears throat> and she sang this tune while walking up and down the beach, and hammered out some text to go with it. Uh, what you'll notice in the text is a set of contrasts. So it's a contrast of before and after. And this goes from the wilderness and wandering to truth and being fed, uh, from restlessness and roaming to joy and feast, and from loneliness and longing to peace and God's leading. This is all who hunger gather gladly. This is a partita, so variations on it.
So wonderful hymns that hopefully you'll know tomorrow and maybe a one that you might not know as well, but that's all right. We can make it through. I appreciate you joining me this evening, learning a little bit about these hymns, and we'll look forward to seeing you in worship in person tomorrow, hopefully at 8.30 and 10.30 here in the sanctuary. And the 11, uh, sorry, the 10.30 service will be live streamed on our YouTube channel as always. And um, you can hear the thunder roaring outside. So hopefully we're getting some much needed rain and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you again next week. Thanks, have a great evening.